Hi folks, I'm Rob Siegel. Some of you know me as the Hack Mechanic. Today we're going to talk about how to start a car using only four wires and bypassing all of the car's electrical system and wiring. So why would you even want to do this? Well, in my case, I wound up with this free uh, fake 2002 TII. I say fake because the injected motor was transplanted. And someone had started to do a rear-mounted battery conversion and then abandoned it halfway through. So the wiring is completely, if I may say, hacked up. <laughs> uh, the battery tray has been removed. There were actually three cables to the uh, to the terminal on the starter. Here's one, which uh, still has a terminal on it. But as you can see, here's um, another one for uh, a cable that ran all the way to the trunk, which isn't even hooked up. If you look carefully at the wire, the ignition wire to the starter, you can see it's completely frayed. There's all sorts of other frayed wiring here. The fuse box is just hanging. Rather than use any of these wires, I just want to bypass them all and start from scratch. The technique I'm about to show you will work on any vintage car. And when I say vintage car, what I mean is something primitive. Which, what I mean by that, is something that either is carbureted with a mechanical fuel pump or is mechanically injected where the injection will run without any electrical hookups except for the electric fuel pump. There are two components that you have to wire directly to the battery. The first is the starter motor, the second is the ignition coil. We'll step through the both of those separately. So the first thing that we have to do is make sure that none of these other electrical connections to the battery can be connected or will short out against the body of the car. So this is the existing positive battery cable and the connections to the alternator and the fuse box. I could either unscrew that from the battery or instead I'm just going to cover the whole thing with a rubber glove. So here, I've temporarily made it so the other old positive battery connections cannot short out to anything. Now I'm just going to take a pair of jumper cables. The other ends are not connected to anything yet. I'm going to take the red one, the positive one, and connect it to that large threaded post on the battery excuse me, on the starter motor that usually heads to the, the positive wire on the battery. Then I'll take the other one and I'll just clamp it anywhere to the body of the starter or the solenoid. Obviously these need to be clean enough to make electrical contact and we'll find out in a moment if they are. Next, I have to connect that spade terminal on the solenoid that is supposed to receive the wire from the ignition. Uh, right now, I'm just going to use this wire that I have that has a female spade at one end and a clamp at the other end. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach down here and unhook the wire that was on the spade. And I'm going to connect this other wire instead. I'll remove this positive clamp so you can see it better. Okay, so I've now connected that up directly to the ignition spade terminal on the starter. Now the next thing that I would do in order to spin the starter is simply to uh, to take this clamp 
the other end of the wire of which is attached to the ignition terminal on the starter solenoid and simply touch it to battery positive. But when I do that, it will spin the starter. If the car is in gear, it will cause the car to lurch forward. So it is crucially important that before you do this, you verify that the car is in neutral. It is in fact in neutral. So all of that having been done, in theory, if I simply touch this wire to battery positive, the starter should now spin. Voila! And just to make this a little bit easier on myself, I have this ancient Sears 35-year-old remote start switch that I can use instead of a wire. So if I connect this end to the spade terminal on the solenoid and this end to the battery, then I can just squeeze the switch, like so. So we have just run the starter motor by connecting it directly to the battery with a pair of jumper cables and a remote starter switch and in doing so have bypassed every wire on the car. Now the thing to do is to do the same thing with the ignition coil. This is the wiring at the coil. There's usually a lot of it. There's usually something like an ignition relay. There might be a ballast resistor, but what you really need to know is that every coil has two main terminals in addition to uh, the fat wire coming out of the center, which goes to the center of the distributor. Um, the two terminals are um, the voltage supply from the battery, which is labeled as 15 or plus, and the triggering side from the condenser on the back of the distributor, which is labeled as 1 or minus. So in order to bypass all of the car's wiring and power the coil directly, all that you really need to do is to unplug the existing wiring from the 15 or the plus side of the coil and run a wire directly from there over to the battery. So I'm simply going to disconnect the wire from the hot side, from the 15 or one side, and connect a wire with an alligator clamp at the other end, and eventually I'll stretch that all the way over to battery positive. I'm not going to connect it right at this moment because it's not a good idea to simply leave a coil connected to battery voltage any longer than you need to. So now, in theory, all that I need to do is connect this alligator cable, which I have connected the other end of to the hot side of the coil, and squeeze this remote start switch, and it should start. Or, well, I shouldn't say it should start. It will spin the, the starter will spin the motor, and the coil should be energized. So if the engine has fuel, it should start. This is, however, a fuel-injected engine and it has an electric fuel pump, and I haven't yet connected the electric fuel pump. However, I did just spray some starting fluid in it, so with any luck, it'll start for a couple of seconds and then die. Well, that was close. Trying that again. There you go. So if this had fuel, it actually would run. Right now it only has starting fluid. So with that, I actually was able to get the car starting and running with only four wires. There is, however, a fifth wire you want to be aware of on the ignition side, and let me show that to you. I said that the wire on the one or negative side of the coil runs to the condenser on the back of the distributor. As you can see, this wire is very frayed and about to break. So rather than use it, I'm just going to disconnect it. I'll show you the back of the coil. Let me just pop the 
cap off just so you can see. So here we go. So here is the wire to the condenser on the back of the coil. So rather than use this frayed wire, I'm just going to replace it with another jumper wire. So this wire is going to go from the condenser on the back of the coil, excuse me, the condenser on the back of the distributor, I'm sorry, to the one or negative side of the coil. And we've got to remember to put the cap back on, remember that to check that the rotor is under the cap. There we go. So now, so I've added in a fifth wire. And in, in doing so, I've bypassed every single wire in the car. One reason to be aware of this issue with the wire on the triggering side of the distributor, um, excuse me, of, of the coil, is that it not only goes to the condenser on the back of the distributor, but from there it goes to the tack in the dashboard. So if there is something screwed up in the wiring from the condenser to the tack, such as it's fried or or um, or it accidentally has burned and laid itself to ground, or if the tack is messed up, uh, that could prevent the car from starting. By simply replacing that wire, you eliminate that possibility. So the last thing is the fuel pump. As I said, this car, because it's mechanically fuel injected, has an electric fuel pump. So. Uh, I have, and, and it is under the back of the car. So I have these wires precariously stretched up to the battery to run the fuel pump. So if I've done this right, all right, so this is the wire to the coil. So the coil is now energized. This is the wire to the remote start switch that will energize the ignition. This is the positive wire to the fuel pump. This is the negative wire to the fuel pump. So when I connect this, I should be able to hear it spin. And I do, I hear the fuel pump spin. So with any luck, this should now start and run the car. And there you go, I have started and am running, in fact, a very long dead car using only, well, in this case, six wires. Let me unhook them all. So having explained this and having successfully even been able to do it, I should tell you, in fact, not to do it. At least not to do it for anything other than the demonstration like I've just done. These connections these alligator clip connections are incredibly unstable. As you can see, these large jumper cable connections to the battery can pop off very, very easily. And the last thing you want to happen is for them to pop off while the engine is running and to short out against ground. So you never would want to do this and try to move the car. And really, you don't want to do this at all. What you would want to do is instead of using jumper cables, you would want to buy a couple of long real battery cables and be able to screw them directly to the starter and directly to the battery without all of this slop. This is the whole thing done a bit more correctly with actual cables from the battery to the starter and the block. So thank you so much. I am Rob Siegel, a.k.a. The Hack Mechanic. You can find me on Facebook. You can find all of my books on Amazon, or you can order them directly from me at www.robsiegel.com.